All right, hello and welcome to my tutorial on how to build a Hotline Miami clone in Unity, well, 2D or 3D, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, so today's first tutorial will be just for basic player movement and camera movement, basically. <laughs> okay, so I'll just show you quick what it's going to look like at the end. So we've got movement. It's not got the animations yet, that'll come in a later tutorial, and the sprites I just made myself. So yeah, uh, the format of it is just going to be, I've already written the scripts, so I'm going to just go through them and explain them, and then you can copy them out. It should be in high enough resolution for you to read. Fine. And um, yeah, okay, let's go. So the first script I'm going to talk about is the player movement. So basically we've got a boolean called moving, which isn't really used now, but basically it's going to control the animation. So if you if it's detecting input from the WASD keys, it'll be true. So it'll animate the legs moving and torso moving and whatever. And if it's not, it won't. So the animations will run off that, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The speed is just how fast the player will move. I should probably have a getter and setter for that. So basically, it's a multiplier for how fast they go. Um, yeah. So you can just change that for all the scripts if you wish or whatever. Uh, okay, so the movement subroutine. Basically, if it's detect, the input.get key will detect if a key is being held down. There's other versions of it, so get key down and get key up, which will return true if a button is pressed down or let go. But this one is just the one we need because then you can just hold it down and it moves. So, okay. And the key code is like basically, it has a all the keys on the keyboard are basically stored in there. So it'll just, it's literally just there. Uh, I'll show you. Key code dot. Yeah, it's got the numbers, or basically all the keys you could ever need. Key code dot w. Okay. Uh, all right, so transform dot translate literally just moves the an object the script is attached to in a direction. So in this case, we're moving in the up direction because forward you wanted to move on the y. What we wanted to sort of I know it's M three, uh, so it's vector three, but we're in two D, so we want to move on the only on the y and x axis, and vector three dot forwards moves on the z axis, so we want to use vector three dot up. So that'll move us up on the y axis. Uh, same way that down moves us down on it, and left and right do the same for the x axis. Uh, speed just makes us move faster, which, like so, instead of 1 on the y-axis, it'll move 5, because it's a multiplier of 5. And time dot delta time, uh, it, I'm not quite sure how it works, but it sort of syncs the whole thing up with the frame rate of the computer, or how fast it read it. So, say if you have two computers, one is quite not that powerful, so it's quite slow. And one is your fucking supercomputer type deal. Uh, the supercomputer will run it at a mu the game at a much higher frame rate. So if you didn't have time dot delta time as a multiplier in it, it would move like at light speed. It'd be really fast and it'd be unplayable. Where it, and the slow one would be slow, basically. So what time dot delta time does? is it syncs it all up so it stays it'll be the same across the board assuming you can run it at a stable frame rate because if you can't then you've got no help for you uh and the space dot world bit at the end is it tells the movement is basically in relative to the world space so uh, if we didn't have that it would move relative to the rotation, so because in Hotline Miami you rotate to the cursor, but your movement is still uh, relative to the world. So, if it was 
uh, if I didn't have this little bit here, it would just move towards the cursor when you rotate rather than just up, down, left and right. So that's kind of vital. And then it just sets movement to true if the input is detected. And basically it's this similar deal for the other three bits, if statements. So transform, dot translate, the direction, the speed, time to delta time and space dot world. Okay. And the last if statement is basically It'll, if it's not detecting any of the four inputs for movement, so W, S, A, and D, it'll set movement to false, moving to false. So if uh, the animation is still playing and you stop pressing the W, A, S, D keys, it'll stop, which is pretty useful. Okay, so now we'll move on to the camera follow player script. Sorry, uh, so basically it has two things, uh, player object, which is just, it'll find, it can use the game object dot find object with tag, uh, basically I'll show you tags now actually, uh, yeah, you can assign game objects tags here, so here, and you can add your own custom tags, uh, there's a couple that already come with it, so this one's player object is this one. So basically once the game is started like here, the camera will find the player game object and have a reference to it because we've stored it in a variable, which is player. And we've just got a Boolean that says follow player. So it just controls whether the camera will follow the player. Okay, so basically we've got the position, so. The new position of the camera is it takes a new vector free because we can't modify the actual transform dot x and y, so we've got to do it through this creating a new vector free. So we take the player's x position, which is this, and the player's y position, but we keep the camera's original z position so it doesn't move like zoom in and out and stuff. And then we assign it to this dot transform position. We assign it to the, we make the position of the camera this new position we've calculated from the player's position and the Z position of the camera. Right, and that basically gives us the effect of see how the camera follows us and we're all at the center of the screen. Yep, that's pretty much it. And yeah. Uh, we don't really need the follow player yet, but that's going to be in the next tutorial for, uh, you know how you hold down, I think it's hold down shift and the, you get to like look ahead in Hotline Miami. I'm going to use that, so if I set it to false, I can just detect, you know, when to do that, pretty much. And the third thing is rotate the cursor, which is kind of vital. So we've got a couple of things we don't actually need direction. I don't think we do. We need it. No, oh, I was wrong. Uh, well, we'll see any errors. Uh, right, basically, so we've got, we've got the mouse position. We've got the camera, which will be just the main camera, which is this here. It's just default for Unity scenes that it gives you. And the rigid body 2D, which is like a controller for physics on objects, but we don't really need it because it's top down, so we can't really have physics. I guess. Oh well. It doesn't really matter for what we use it for. So just when you're adding it, uh, you'll want to change all these values to zero just because we're not really using the physics. We're just using it to control rotation towards the cursor. And that's a train going by. Sorry if you can hear that. Okay. So basically it calls rotate to camera and it uses some fancy stuff from the camera to calculate the screen to world point. So It'll take like the game's resolution, so it'll be like 10, eight, uh, 1280 by 720 or whatever. I know mine's 1080p, but I'm just using that as an example. And calculate what that would be as an X and Y uh, in game. And then it uses the, works out where the mouse position is in that, in that so it can, it gets an actual location in the game to rotate to and then the second line here uh, uses some maths 
something. I'm not quite sure what that does. I, I just know it works, but I'm not quite sure how because, uh, yeah. So it basically just rotates towards it. Uh, yeah. So it just like <laughs> takes the transform dot position of you, the player character, from the mouse position and works out that that's the location to rotate to. So if we just see that, see how it'll rotate just following the camera and the movement is still relative to the world. So that's W, ASD and stuff. So yeah. Uh, okay, so that's pretty much the end of part one. I hope that was useful. Uh, I'm just gonna go like show you the scripts again in case you want to pause and copy them again or whatever you know your call and yeah thank you for watching go play my new game uh, it's loud or quiet it's basically sort of like hotline Miami uh, there's like a little demo on itch.io which I will link in the description and yeah go play that it's like Hotline Miami, but stealing things and not as brutal, because that might be missing the point, but I can... Yeah, go play it. I don't care. Alright, just watching. Bye!